What's up guys, Hong, OG Fitness, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna talk about to specialize or to generalize for self-defense. Patrick, Patrick from Germany. My question is, from a self-defense standpoint, what do you think are the advantages, disadvantages of getting quite proficient in one martial arts style after the other versus cross training two or three styles at the same time and getting better at each of them slowly. Thank you so much and keep up the awesome work. Thanks for the question. I really appreciate that and thanks for watching for the support. 12 years of Taekwondo first Dan and you competed four years boxing kickboxing. So essentially Patrick is a high level grappler. If I had let's say uh, somebody who was strictly concerned with self-defense and they wanted to learn a martial art. I would put them in the sport of MMA and reason being is because in MMA you already have a couple of martial arts in MMA. I would rather the person generalize uh, because really think about it. Typical Joe, your average Joe on the street doesn't know how to fight. Uh, they might think they know how to fight, they might have gotten a couple of street fights in here and there and it might be kind of tough but they don't really know how to fight. So that's why you would have such an advantage over them. For example, when you're fighting in Taekwondo, you know, for the most part, you're, you have to be in kicking range so that you could kick the person. If you get a little bit closer, now you're in punching range and a little bit closer, you're in punching, trapping, trapping with the hands, you know, clack, clack, clack. That's where Wing Chun and all that, it could be very handy, sticky hands and all kinds of stuff. Then you got trapping to grappling range, right? So. That's why if you go to MMA and you generalize, then you pretty much touch on all those ranges. You only do one martial art and wait till you actually get good at it. The problem is in a self-defense scenario, you never know how it's gonna go now. You never know if it's going to be one punch knockout, you're gonna have that distance to kick him in the head. You know, you might be fighting in a very close, uh, in close quarters. You might have a lot of people around you so you won't be able to uh, move around too much. You're fighting a guy, like you're, you're about to get into a scrap with a guy and you know this guy is drunk off his ass. You might not want to necessarily knock him out. You might kind of kill him. He might fall, hit his head on something. It would be a better option maybe just to take him down or throw him very gently, take him down and, or I would actually just leg kick him in my opinion. But if you don't, if you don't have those tools, what happens is that you, you're, you're forced to use whatever it is that you have. So it'd be a little bit complicated in a bar uh, to just like, you know, wow, like spin kick him. So you generalize and then you could like have one or two, one, one thing or two things that you could be really good at, but you still keep sharpening the other ones once in a while. I think it's important for you to um, have like a well-rounded skill set when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. So you'll be better prepared for a uh, self-defense situation. All right, guys, enough of the rambling. That was it. So if you guys have any questions, comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click on the notification bell. Also, there's a link down below. If you guys click on it, it's gonna bring you to a page where you could follow me on all my social media platforms. And you can also apply for, uh, for coaching so that you guys can work directly with me. Also, one last thing guys, if you have any questions, right, send me an email. That's the best way to reach me. I read them and I'll, I'll answer your, your questions, man. All right, peace.